Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and I'm with eWrench.com. This video is about how to install Ubuntu 10.04 LTS into Microsoft Hyper-V. There will be five sections. One, requirements and planning. Two, create a virtual machine. Three, install Ubuntu 10.04 LTS LAMP into Microsoft Hyper-V. Four, configure Ubuntu. And five, verify that the web server works. With that said, let's continue on and uh, get started with requirements and planning. In this section, I'm going to talk about some of the requirements and planning that you need to do in order to install Ubuntu 10.04 LTS into Microsoft Server Hyper-V. If you're familiar with installing servers into virtual machines, some of this information may be redundant and you can skip this section. Software and hardware, uh, of course you should have the latest version of Ubuntu 10.04 LTS, long-term service, 64-bit version, somewhere in your network where you can get at it, uh, an ISO file for the install. Um, of course, Microsoft Hyper-V with administrative privileges and an additional workstation or computer on your network so that you can check the installation. Uh, you need to have a unique server name for your Ubuntu installation and this installation of machine name will be vbuntu01 uh, make sure you have a FQDN or fully qualified domain name for your Ubuntu server if you're on a local network you can make it anything you wish the FQDN for this demonstration will be vbuntu01.elearning.edu Passwords, you'll need two passwords, one for the server and one for your database. A good password should have a minimum of an uppercase character, lowercase character, and number character. And a special character such as star, dollar, and a minimum of eight characters in length. Memory, I recommend your virtual server have a minimum of one gigabyte of memory, so you can use it for the server and other applications such as Moodle or Joomla. Memory can also be dynamically allocated for your virtual server through Hyper-V. Uh, to get the full benefits 64-bit server, you should allocate 4 gigabytes of server. But for this demonstration, I will use 1 gigabyte of memory. Storage. Decide how you want your storage allocated. You have the options of an IDE, Integrated Driver Electronics Controller, or SCSI Controller. The SCSI controller requires the operating system integration components to be installed in the guest virtual machine. Uh, so that would have to be installed after you install the um, HV underscore store VSC uh, Hyper-V module uh, that affects the kernel. You can also decide to have dynamically allocated storage or fixed disk storage. Uh, this demonstration will use dynamically allocated Cadence storage with an IDE controller to make it simpler. Networking, this is the area with the most problems in getting Ubuntu to perform correctly. Plan out how your server will attach to your network ahead of time to minimize problems. You should have a dedicated NIC for your virtu virtual server. If possible, if not, share a card with a, another guest operating system, not the Hyper-V manager. And use a synthetic NIC network adapter the default as opposed to a legacy network adapter because it's faster and it will work with Ubuntu. And decide if you want to dynamically allocate or statically allocate your MAC address. Uh, most servers run with a static IP internet protocol address and use a d DNS domain name server to allow other computers to connect to this server. But this demonstration will use a static MAC address of 0015 5D0120 with reserved DHCP dynamic host control protocol. The workstation used will have the server name added to its host file to resolve any DNS difficulties. Essentially, I don't have a DNS server on this network. Uh, thank you. Now we're ready to go to creating a virtual machine uh, for the Ubuntu install in Microsoft Hyper-V. In this section, we create the virtual machine. 
in which Ubuntu 10.04 LTS LAMP server will be installed. To do that, you should be in Hyper-V with the Hyper-V Manager up. Click on New, Virtual Machine, and up pops a new Virtual Machine Wizard. Click Next, give it a name, V U B U T U O one. This is not the name of the machine, but the, this is the name for the virtual machine, but it's not the um, actual machine name on the network that you'll be seeing. And where we're storing this, in this case, we're going to use a default location, but normally you wouldn't store it at the default location for a machine that's actually going to be facing out to the network. Click on Next as 100. One gigabyte of memory, 1024 megabytes. Next, we're going to connect it using the Realtek NIC2. That is a network card shared with another guest operating system. It is not used by Hyper-V. Click Next. And we're going to create a virtual hard disk and we're going to use default location. You'll notice that it's going something else, someplace else from the virtual machine. Uh, and that's not a good way. You would like to have all your files together in one place. And we're going to use size 127 gigabytes maximum. And it's going to actually going to be a uh, dynamically allocated using IDE. Click Next. We're going to inst uh, install not, uh, an operating system from a boot CD DVD ROM. We're going to use an image file. In this case, browse to the location. I'm going to pick this one right here. Ubuntu 10.04.3 server AMD 64 for 64B bit. Click open. Click next. And it gives me the information network card uh, name, memory, network card, hard disk, and where the operating system is coming from. Click Finish. And the Virtual Machine Wizard will be, have created a virtual machine for us. There's one more setting that I want to change here. So we go over here, the Ubuntu 01 settings. And we can add some hardware here, BIOS, memory, processor. We can set the processor. We've got the hard drive here. We've got the ID control DVD drive, where it's actually set to the ISO file where Ubuntu is. Network adapter. Now over here on the network def, we have to make a change here. And that is we're going to use a static MAC address. The reason we want to use a static MAC address is because for this machine, we're going to use... DHCP or Dynamic Host Control po Protocol reserve reservations from a router as opposed to uh, just straight DHCP. You normally for a server you should have a static address but basically what this will do is have one address reserved for this server and so it will be the same constantly. So we're going to make sure that nothing else on the system has this same MAC address, which I've already done, 5D, whoops, 5D, 01, 10, 20, click OK, and now we've created our virtual machine and it's ready to have Ubuntu installed. Here we have our Vbuntu 01 virtual machine. We're going to install an Ubuntu LAMP server into it. To do that we sit here and click connect. Here we have a window. Cannot resize this window for some reason, but it's big enough to do the job. So we, then we go to Action, click on Start, Window Machines, Hyper-V installs, starts, English is the language that we're going to choose, and we've got a number of choices here, 
and we're just basically going to, you can scroll through it by using the up and down arrow, but we're going to just basically do install, install Ubuntu server. You notice that it runs fairly slowly. Uh, this is because of the video refresh is not set right for Ubuntu. We will uh, correct that after the installation. Don't worry about it. It's a slow install. Uh, we'll go in and out uh, as needed, so try and uh, not waste as much of your time as possible. This is the frame buffer area that uh, is not going to work right during the install, but afterwards that's the first thing that we're going to fix when we get to the configurations. So bear with us. Choose a language. And in this case we're going to pick English because that seems to be default. Hit enter. And now we choose a country, and in my case it will be United States. And I'm going to use the default uh, of not detecting the keyboard layout because that takes you through a couple more screens which delays your install installation. And now it's asked for the uh, origin of the keyboard. In this case we're going to just pick USA. Hit enter again. And we're going to pick the straight USA because there's a number of options for USA. Loading additional components, we're going to uh, actually start now. The installation starts, and it's going to take a, it's going to take a little bit of time. As I said, we're going to go in and out, and uh, I will take you through all the keyboard entries necessary. Now it says configure the network. No network interface is detected. So basically, don't worry about this. This is another thing that we'll have to set up after the install. So we'll just make sure uh, hit continue, enter for continue, and we'll take care of that afterwards. Host name. If you recall, during the requirements, we named it v Ubuntu 01 and tab for continue, enter for continue, and it asks you to configure your clock because it has to be done manually, it can't look up anywhere because it has no network connection, since US we we'll pick Eastern. actually go through partitioning methods. I'm not going to use manual. We're going to use a guided uh, guided use entire disk and set up our LVM. That's the choice. Enter. Part 
partition our disks by ATA virtual hard drive. So and now we've a logical volume manager or LVM can be configured. The current partitioning scheme has been written to disk. So we will hit tab to go over to the S, yes, right to change the disk and configure the LVM and hit enter. And we're going to use the maximum because tab which goes continue and then hit enter. So now our uh, our drive is being set up. Partitions are going to be formatted. It's going to ask whether you want to write changes this tab first and then enter. So to write the changes to disks. Our partitions are being formatted. As you can see, this is a slow install, but step at a time it will be completed, and you will have a okay, once the base system is set up, set up some users actually set up one user. In this case I will use myself. Hit tab for continue after I type it in. Hit enter. My username is going to be Mike. And I will accept that. Continue. comes a password. In this case, continue. It's going to ask for me to re-enter the password again. Tab, continue. I was serious, I could I would configure my home directory for encryption. Basically on this install I'll say no. Hit the return hit the return. If you need to use the HTT proxy again, we can't do this. No network connection. Tab, continue. Configuring app. There is no way to scan because we have no network connection. So we're going to uh, install software. We have three choices here for security. Applying updates. I'm going to choose install security updates automatically. Manage system with landscape if you're going to do anything uh, where you're required to maintain security that's a cost from Ubuntu but it's it's well worth it. But I'm just going to install security updates automatically because I'm very, too cheap to go to landscape.
So now you get your choice. What are we going to install? We're going to use a down arrow and we're going to install and then the space bar to install the LAMP server and an additional one to install the open SSH server so that I can work with this uh, computer from a workstation. And once that's done, all I have to do is hit tap, go down to continue, and install the LAMP server and open SSH server. And all, since all this is already on the downloaded ISO file, we don't need anything to go anywhere and get any more uh, software. So now since we have a database, we have to have a password for database, the MySQL database. Tab continue, enter your password. It's going to ask that you install, uh, actually enter the password again. continue and hopefully I've entered the password both times. Unfortunately I had a password input error so I've got to go do this again. So Again, and ask for a password. Tab continue. And I must have done it correctly this time. And basically, it's going to go through and uh, do all these installings, installations. Uh, now it asks if you want to install a grub loader, and we'll choose default, which is yes, hit enter. So this is the only operating system on this hard drive. So now our installation is complete. We'll hit continue when it restarts. When the machine restarts, we'll start with our uh, setting up configuration. The first thing we're going to set up is to make this uh, screen operate faster or the, the refresh operate uh, faster on the uh, screen. And there our login screen is up and we're able to log into our Ubuntu uh, LAMP server and begin uh, our configurations to make this uh, Ubuntu LAMP server run, uh, run or play nicely with uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. That will be in the next section. In this section, uh, we're going to uh, take on our Ubuntu install and configure it so it'll run uh, with Microsoft Hyper-V. To speed up the screen, screen refresh is necessary to disable the frame buffer module. So let's log in. Now you'll see a, a, a notice here, it says system information disabled due to load higher than 1.0. I've seen this cut, that uh, warning come on and off as I've been playing around with Ubuntu and I'm not 100% sure exactly what is causing that. But we'll check and see after we've got everything configured. So to disable the frame, frame prefer, pick your uh, editor of choice. I'm going to Use the Vim editor and go to the file. Well, I'll go to directory etc mod 
probe point B and open the get the exact name blacklist frame buffer blacklist frame buffer oh, file So we'll scroll down to the bottom of this file. And we'll add blacklist. VGA sixteen. Me. And we're going to save and write the file. File's written. And we're going to reboot. I just have to use a sudo. When it restarts, we should uh, be working at normal speed as far as the graphics are concerned. When it restarts, we're going to uh, basically uh, take some Hyper-V modules that Microsoft has written and uh, add them to the kernel so that Ubuntu will play nicer Ubuntu and Hyper-V will play a little bit nicer together As you can see, our screen is working a little bit quicker now. So now we need to go to the following file, sudo vim, text editor of your choice, tc, fs. Modules and we are going to enter the following HV Hyper V modules VM plus HV. This one is for storage. VSC. HV. PLK. VSC. This one is for network. So get the synthetic network adap adapter working with Ubuntu. And those are all that. Will, those are the only modules that will work with uh, Ubuntu 10.04. Microsoft's written some others, mouse uh, utilities. Um, I think they've written a time module, but we'll we'll adjust uh, so that but we'll adjust work another way to get around to make sure that uh, Hyper-V and um, this Ubuntu server and you know share the same time. So anyway, so now let's right quit. Okay, so now we're going to run an update on the kernel. T RAM FS. 
plus dash u and you should see something like this okay we're going to do a pseudo reboot again to make sure everything's working log back in and we'll make sure all these HV uh, modules are working so we're doing a list mod pipe it into uh, And all four are working, otherwise it wouldn't be listed there. If one wasn't working, uh, you wouldn't see it. So now we need to go back and uh, set up our networking. So let's go to the network interfaces file. sudo vim tc network interfaces. This is the hardest thing I have to do with uh, the interfaces. So you're going to have to settle up with either a static IP address or a DHCP. In this case, I said I would use reserved DHCP. I'm going to insert. if you need to want to set it up with a static IP address use your IP address okay, escape I'm going to write this right quit and we're going to have to do one more thing here for the uh, networking we're going to have to change do a little change on the computer name for the Hosts file so sudo vim tc tc hosts and where it says vbuntu we're going to change that name or actually we're going to add vbuntu our entire fully qualified domain name, name which we should have on hand e learning dot edu tab that over and go ahead and let's save this right quick again so let's restart our networking and use sudo t c b networking restart Configuring in ignoring unknown interface e zero equal t h zero. So let's go back and see what the uh, 
Okay, see the mistake I made? Typing error. Insert. TH. Zero. And let's right quit. And then let's go back, use the up arrow. Restart it. Okay. So we've got a uh, 192, 168, 129. Uh, Let's keep track of this. Let's uh, reboot this. Reboot. And see what we got when we come up. Again, we get system information disabled due to load higher than one. Pseudo at get update. As you can see, we do have a network connection now. We're updating our packages. Once we do an update, we will get do an upgrade, and then after the upgrade, we're going to add the time package. Sudo app get upgrade. Continue. Yes, of course this. Take a while for this to happen. And we'll come back. Okay, uh, so let's add the Timex package, sudo, since the update's done, apt uh, get install. Timex, and what this should do is uh, I should make the, our Ubuntu server and uh, Hyper-V uh, compare clocks and, and basically maintain uh, the same level of timing so the clocks are not skewed. After we're done with this, uh, we're going to do another IF config and take a look at that problem with the resolve.conf file. If you recall, uh, when originally in the requirements documents, I stated that would not be running a DNS server on this uh, network. So we'll do an IF config, and we've got our internet address, and we seem to be okay. Of course, it's going out to the network. So we're going to leave this running and come back and uh, see if we can access the server from uh, a workstation in the next section. For the final section, we're going to verify that our Ubuntu a server that we installed into Hyper-V is actually working. Uh, the, uh, the web server is working. To do that, we go. this is a, a workstation, a Ubuntu workstation, that we're just going to uh, use to check the web server. 
go to. And we simply had put in the IP address that we got from the web server. 68.1.29 and Apache 2 sends a signal that it works. Now it's got a name to dot e learning dot edu and we'll notice that up comes a server not found message. In order to repair this, we will have to make a change to the host file. We go to Applications, Accessories, Terminal, and we're going to use a Nano Text Editor because Vim Text Editor is not available. And we're going to make a change to this host file. And we're going to add one. 92.168.1.29 because there is no DNS server to look it up we're going to have to add it manually and name of our server is vpuntu.elearning.edu so we're going to save this put a yes and hit enter and we're going to have to restart our network sudo etc init.d networking restart Ignoring unknown interface eth1 equal eth1. Uh, this was previously something was not configured right on this workstation. This was an automatic configuration. So, but let's go back to our uh, and we'll hit refresh here, and we'll see that this works. And that's simply because we entered it and restarted the network. Uh, this problem right here is not is not involved the Ubuntu install, but it actually involves the workstation. And that's it for installing uh, Ubuntu 10.4 LTS LAMP server into Hyper-V. Thank you.